Well, this is a very exciting event. This is the kickoff for an effort to turn the entire Arklatex into what we call an intelligent community. And by that we mean a community that uses information and communications technology to build a prosperous economy and one that includes a large number, you know, a large percent of its, of its population in that economy. Um, if you th it's, it's, as I was saying this morning to somebody, some communities are lucky and some communities are smart. It's best to be both. Uh, this part of the world's got some interesting and lucky things happening with natural gas, for instance, but the question is, how are you going to be smart and use that to create real prosperity that spreads throughout the community? You know, here we are still in a recession. Uh, we have massive unemployment across the country. Um, we, and in particular here in Louisiana, um, you know, we have some serious uh, economic bumps in the road, particularly with the oil spill. We've got a lot of people employed uh, cleaning up oil on the Gulf Coast, but we some of the better jobs because of what's going on around the moratorium is, is uh, preventing from uh, better job formation, better incomes. So, but for this particular region of the country, which uh, we're not close to the Gulf Coast, you know, we're in a rural community, um, relatively high unemployment. Uh, depressed wages and we need to think about how do you improve the wages in this area. If you can figure out how to um, groom this community um, with better access to jobs, better access to uh, electronic commerce, you're going to uh, probably improve the lot of a number of people. Well the world has changed. Uh, at one time what mattered most about a place was where it was. It was at the mouth of a river, it was sitting on top of a natural resource, it was some, some otherwise valuable. Increasingly it's innovation that makes the difference in the community. It's its ability to create jobs that are part of our next economy, not our old economy. Um, that doesn't just happen by itself most of the time. Communities actually have to get together Business has to work with government, government has to work with institutions, with nonprofits, in a real collaborative dance to pull that off. And so it takes this kind of gathering where we bring people from different parts of the community together to understand the opportunity and to attack it. What the heck is an intelligent community? Well, let's start with what it's not. It's not about being the biggest community or the richest community or the community that looks best in a bathing suit. It's uh, not about having a multi-gigabit ultra-broadband network so blindingly fast that it knows what you want before you do. It is uh, not about having one of the world's top 100 universities in your town doing research so advanced that your mayor could not explain it to save her life. Uh, it's not about having lots of super hot high-tech companies run by people who are not yet old enough to shave regularly. And it's not even about how many people you have in your community who dress in black, who prefer Twitter to email, and who always order a bold part skim, part soy, double shot macchiato. Intelligent communities do have many of these things, but it's not what makes them intelligent. So. What does? Well, it comes down to three things. What they do, how they do it, and why they do it. Okay, what do intelligent communities do? It starts with broadband. Broadband, well, it's like oxygen. You don't notice each breath you take, of course, neither do I until you can't take the next one. You, unless you've got a digital highway to drive on, you're not going to be able to drive your community to its own future. If you don't have broadband, and I know that's a challenge in many parts of the Arklatex, it's a big problem and it's the one you've got to work on as job one. Broadband access is the linchpin uh, to, the, uh, to certain types of businesses. If you want a back office uh, call center operation, you better have high speed internet. Uh, if you want to uh, have certain types of uh, um, architecture and engineering firms that need to send uh, uh, drawings over the internet, you need high speed to make sure that you're able to do that. Uh, it is absolutely such an important function uh, to the way commerce operates in many places anymore that it is absolutely uh, strategic and essential. Um, 
uh, one, of, uh, one of the people that helped me prepare this speech found this statistic that in, in Korea and Japan, uh, that uh, high speed is within moments of being available to almost every household in, in both of those countries. Uh, this will enable um, everybody to download movies, to uh, uh, do commerce from their home, to see their doctor over the internet if necessary. Uh, rural telemedicine is, is becoming a big thing in, in many places around the world. City after city that I travel to, retaining the youth is, is one of the things that, can, that is needed. With the number of college educated people that we have, you know, there are only so many college educated uh, jobs available in Houston, Dallas, New Orleans, Chicago, uh, Memphis, Nashville, you name it. So we need to figure out what we're gonna do in our mid-sized cities in terms of helping uh, to retain our youth there. Uh, finally, we're going to be talking about new directions. We're going to be thinking about the new types of economic development partnerships that, uh, um, that uh, we need to set up in order to be more effective in this global economy. We're going to think about incorporating renewable energies. Um, and we're going to be thinking about rebranding the places where we are. Um, Birmingham, Alabama uh, is not going to be Little Pittsburgh anymore. Uh, it needs to be thinking about what is it going to be uh, beyond steel because that is not what it's going to be in the future. So um, part of this economic development landscape, as Max talked about earlier, was what role will that uh, infrastructure that we do not have uniformly across the country of broadband going to play? We know the role that our rail plays. We know the role that our uh, transportation system plays. We know uh, the role of many of our other infrastructures play. But we have many people that are shut out of this infrastructure known as broadband. You know, in Washington, D.C., we're, we're very fortunate. We have uh, significant broadband capability. Most law firms no longer pay a long-distance bill. Uh, they use voice over internet protocol for their long-distance calls. Um, if you're in a rural place with low speed, there's not a chance you're going to continue to play Ma Bell, Verizon, whoever your, your long distance company is, uh, a, a, a substantial long distance bill every, every day. So this is going to help many places think about how you can compete in this uh, evolving marketplace. Uh, we're going to have many of the movers and shakers of uh, uh, the regional economic development, uh, public policy leaders, they ought to be equipped to talk about what are the roadblocks and what are the opportunities in terms of uh, being an intelligent community.